Hello, future native people. It's me, Richard, fresh from the past. After using the first campaign to figure out how to use ChatGPT best to play some D&D, I created Henry, the tiefling warlock, and started a new campaign. So grab your dice and join us in this epic quest. You find yourself in a dimly lit tavern known as the Black Cauldron. It's a seedy establishment filled with shady characters. You sit at a corner table, nursing a glass of dark ale. What would you like to do? I would like to look around the room and see what's happening. Certainly, Henry. You glance around the room, taking in the scene. The tavern is filled with a motley crew of patrons. At one table, a group of rowdy dwarves engage in a boisterous drinking contest. Near the bar, a hooded figure hunches over a parchment, whispering to the bartender. In the far corner, a minstrel strums a lute and sings a mournful ballad. As you scan the room, you notice a mysterious figure in a dark cloak observing you from a shadowy corner. I would like to take my drink and join the mysterious figure. It seems like they might be up to no good, and I'm all about that. You pick up your drink and saunter over to the mysterious figure in the dark cloak. They watch you closely as you approach, and you notice a glint of curiosity in their eyes. You take a seat across from them and ask, What's your business with me, stranger? The figure leans in, their voice barely above a whisper. I've heard rumors that you seek power and I can offer you just that. But first, you must prove your dedication. There's a hidden artifact in the nearby ruins of Whispering Shadows. Retrieve it for me, and you shall have a taste of true power. And what does this mysterious artifact do? The figure in the cloak smirks and replies. Ah. The artifact is said to grant its possessor the ability to control the minds of others, bending their will to your desires. Imagine the possibilities. They slide a map across the table towards you, showing the location of the Whispering Shadows ruins. Retrieve the artifact, and we shall speak further of the power it can offer you. Do you accept the mission to retrieve the artifact, or do you have other questions or actions in mind? I accept this mission, and I take the map and leave immediately since I don't have any money on me and can't pay for the beer that I'm drinking. You nod in agreement, taking the map and leaving the tavern, your unfinished drink sitting on the table. As you step out into the moonlit night, you follow the map's directions to the Whispering Shadows ruins. The journey takes you through a dark forest filled with eerie sounds, and the ruins soon come into view. At the entrance of the ruins, you see a decrepit stone archway leading into the darkness. What would you like to do next? Does the map offer any warnings about the ruins' dangers? Upon closer examination of the map, you find a warning written in an elaborate script at the bottom. Beware the ancient guardians that roam the ruins, and the curses that linger in its depths. Approach with caution, and prepare for the unknown. With that warning in mind, what's your next move as you stand before the entrance to the Whispering Shadows ruins? Uh, I would like to make my way through the ruins quietly, trying to avoid any guardians. As you enter the ruins, you move stealthily, carefully avoiding any potential dangers. Please roll a stealth check to determine how quietly you can navigate through the ruins, and let me know the result. Ah, uh, that's a 10 with my modifiers. With your stealth roll of 10, you move cautiously through the ruins, trying to minimize noise and stay hidden from any potential threats. As you explore deeper, you come across a dimly lit chamber filled with ancient relics. Among the items you notice a glimmering amulet that seems to match the description of the artifact you were sent to retrieve. However, guarding the amulet is a pair of stone golems that come to life as you approach. Roll for initiative to determine the order of actions in combat. I got a 14 on my initiative roll. You act swiftly, Henry, with an initiative of 14. This fight, like all D&D fights, took quite a long time to actually get through, despite it being rather uneventful. So I just got ChatGPT to give me a summary of this fight that should work and be more interesting. Henry, the tiefling warlock, encountered two menacing stone golems while exploring the Whispering Shadows ruins. Reacting swiftly, Henry was the first to engage, striking the first golem with an eldritch blast, dealing significant damage. However, the golems retaliated, and one managed to hit Henry, bringing his health dangerously low. Recognizing the dire situation, Henry adopted a hit-and-run strategy, using Eldritch Blast to target the golems while keeping himself safely out of their melee reach. This tactic worked effectively against the golems, as Henry's consistent Eldritch Blasts wore them down. The first golem fell after a series of blows, and despite a few missed shots, the second golem was eventually defeated as well. With both adversaries now reduced to rubble, Henry successfully retrieved the artifact from the ruins. I would like to investigate the artifact, uh, trying to find out basically how it works, what its limitations are, and if there's any dangers to actually using it. You carefully examine the artifact you've retrieved from the ruins. It appears to be a finely crafted amulet adorned with intricate runes and gemstones. As you study it, you sense a dark and powerful magic emanating from within. To learn more about the artifact and its properties, you decide to conduct a more in-depth investigation. Please roll an arcana check to gain insight into the amulet's nature and any potential dangers associated with it. I got an 18 on my Arcana check. With an Arcana check of 18, you're able to discern several things about the amulet. The amulet is indeed imbued with dark and potent magic. It possesses the ability to exert control over the minds of others, allowing you to influence their thoughts and actions. The amulet's power is not unlimited. It requires a constant supply of your own magical energy to function, which can be draining over time. 
The more you use it, the more it will tax your magical reserves. Mm. There are inherent dangers associated with wielding this artifact. Overuse or misuse of its power could potentially corrupt your own thoughts and intentions, leading you down a darker path. Mm. Armed with this knowledge, you now have a choice to make regarding how to proceed with this newfound source of power. What will you do, Henry? I would like to wear the amulet and find the mysterious stranger who gave me the mission to test its effects. You place the amulet around your neck, feeling its dark magic pulse against your skin. With the amulet in your possession, you set out to find the mysterious stranger who tasked you with retrieving it. Following the map they provided, you eventually locate them in a secluded spot deep within the forest. The figure in the dark cloak waits, as if expecting your return. As you approach, they nod in acknowledgement. You've retrieved the artifact, I see. Have you felt its power? It's a lure. I would like to use the amulet and command them to give me a health potion. Do I actually need to roll anything to use this amulet? Using the amulet's power to command the mysterious figure is within your capabilities. However, it's important to remember that using the amulet can have consequences, as it can be draining on your magical energy and potentially corrupt your own intentions. You don't need to roll for this specific action since it's a command, but you should be mindful of how often and how aggressively you use the amulet's abilities. The figure, under the influence of your command, reaches into their cloak and hands you a health potion. As you wish. They say, their voice now devoid of resistance. You now have a health potion in your possession. What would you like to do next? I would like to drink that health potion. Uh, how much health do I regain? A standard health potion typically restores 2d4 plus 2 hit points when consumed. To determine how much health you regain from drinking the potion, please roll 2d4 and add 2 to the result. Ah, oh, sweet! I got a full 8 HP back, so I'm back to full health. Uh, now, fully healthy, I respond, Oh yes, I felt its power, and I would now like to use the amulet's power to trick the stranger into thinking that I've handed it over, when in reality, I'm just handing them some string. You regain a total of 8 hit points as the health potion revitalizes your body, bringing you back to full health. With a sly grin, you respond to the mysterious figure. Oh, indeed, the power is intoxicating. You then use the amulet's power to create an illusion, making it appear as though you're handing over the amulet. In reality, you give them a piece of string. The figure takes the string, seemingly satisfied. Well done, Henry. You've proven your dedication. They say, not suspecting the trickery. You now have control over the situation. What would you like to do next? I say, I trust this means you have even more nefarious plans for me, expecting that they will either direct me to more sinister artifacts or back to the home base where I might be able to steal more things. The figure's hooded head tilts slightly as they regard you. Indeed, Henry, there are always opportunities for those with the thirst for power. They reply cryptically. Stay close, and you shall learn of our next endeavor. With that, they turn and begin to walk deeper into the forest, expecting you to follow. I follow along. I expect that this will lead to more opportunities to please my patron, Dane Felicity Nighthound. You follow the mysterious figure deeper into the forest, your thoughts filled with anticipation of the opportunities that lie ahead to serve your patron, Dame Felicity Nighthound. As you continue down this path, the dark and winding road of your adventures stretches out before you. You continue to follow the mysterious figure through the forest, your newly acquired amulet of immense power hanging around your neck. As you walk, you ask them, how many members are a part of your organization? The figure's voice remains enigmatic as they respond. Our organization is shrouded in secrecy, Henry. We are but one small piece of a much larger puzzle, and the true number of members is known to only a few. What matters is that we share a common goal, the pursuit of power and influence. As you delve deeper into the mysteries of this organization, you can't help but wonder what other secrets and challenges await you on this path. What's the name of this mysterious organization? The figure looks at you for a moment, as if deliberating whether to reveal this particular piece of information. Eventually, they reply. We are known as the Obsidian Covenant, a name that represents the darkness that shrouds our ambitions and the unbreakable bonds that tie us together. With the name of the organization revealed, you continue your journey alongside the enigmatic figure, delving deeper into the world of the Obsidian Covenant. Uh, I want to experiment with the amulet. Does it give me any ability to hear the thoughts of others or perceive their intentions in any way? Or does it just allow me to send my thoughts and intentions into their head? You decide to experiment with the amulet's powers as you walk alongside the figure from the Obsidian Covenant. You focus your thoughts, attempting to discern if the amulet grants you the ability to hear the thoughts of others or perceive their intentions. As you concentrate, you realize that the amulet primarily allows you to send your thoughts and intentions into the minds of others, influencing them to a certain extent. However, it doesn't grant you the ability to read their thoughts or perceive their intentions directly. It's a tool for manipulation and control rather than telepathy. Boo, that's lame. I say to the fact that the amulet doesn't let me read minds. Please tell me there isn't any kind of stupid initiation ritual or anything else that I have to do like that. I say quickly trying to pass over the fact that I was booing in response to my own thoughts and not the conversation. 
The figure from the Obsidian Covenant chuckles softly at your comment about the amulet's limitations. No, Henry, there are no silly initiation rituals. Your actions and dedication in the field speak louder than any ceremonial rite. We value results over formalities. Oh, thank the abyss. I hate when you try and join an evil organization they're all about order and respect. I'm in this for the chaos and power. The figure nods in understanding. We share your appreciation for chaos and power. The Obsidian Covenant embraces those who are willing to tread the path of darkness and seize opportunities without being bound by needless formalities. It seems you've found an organization that aligns with your goals and desires. As you journey deeper into the Obsidian Covenant, the potential for chaos and power awaits you. So, I assume that there's someone in charge. No organization can exist without some form of leadership. Who's the mook running this shindig? The figure smiles beneath their hood. Indeed, every organization needs leadership. At the helm of the Obsidian Covenant is the enigmatic figure known as the Shadow Master. They are a master of shadow magic, a puppeteer of sorts, manipulating events from the shadows to further our goals. You'll meet them when the time is right. Ah, a Ra's al Ghul type. I guess that's not a bad stereotype to have in charge. Anyway, I should probably know your name if you're bringing me into this club. I say trying to downplay the Covenant's reputation in this stranger's mind. The figure nods in agreement. Of course. You may call me Vesper. That's the name I go by within the Obsidian Covenant. We have many members with various backgrounds and talents, all working toward a common purpose. With the introduction of Vesper, you have a name to associate with the enigmatic figure who led you into this organization. I use the amulet's power to make them tell me the truth. That's the name you go by in the Covenant, but what's your real name? You use the amulet's power to compel Vesper to tell you the truth. They pause for a moment, seemingly unable to resist, and then reluctantly admit. My true name is Evelyn, but that name carries no weight here. It appears that you've uncovered a glimpse of their real identity, even though they prefer to go by Vesper within the Obsidian Covenant. Well, Vesper, how much longer until we get there? Vesper, or Evelyn, looks ahead and replies. We're not far now. We're nearing our destination. Soon, you will be initiated into the next stage of our organization. As you continue your journey with Evelyn, the mysteries of the Obsidian Covenant and its goals unfold before you. I look around at our surroundings. Is it appropriately spooky, or does this look like it would be unexpectedly cheery in the daytime? You take a moment to look around at your surroundings. The forest through which you've been traveling certainly has an eerie and foreboding atmosphere. All gnarled trees cast long shadows, and the underbrush is thick and overgrown, making the path ahead appear mysterious and haunted. It's the kind of place that would seem even spookier in the dead of night. However, you can't help but wonder how different it might appear in the daytime, under the warmth of the sun. The contrast between night and day in these woods could be quite striking. Yeah, all right. Uh, I continue the journey following the stranger until we arrive at our destination. You continue your journey, following Evelyn through the eerie forest until you finally arrive at your destination. Before you stands a hidden entrance to a cave concealed by overgrown vines and foliage, it's clear that this is where your next stage of initiation into the Obsidian Covenant will take place. Evelyn gestures towards the cave entrance. This is where your next test awaits. Enter and embrace the darkness within. I enter the cave and give the darkness a big squishy hug. You enter the cave with a hint of humor, playfully embracing the darkness within. The cave's interior is dimly lit, with the walls covered in ancient symbols and markings. As you venture deeper, the passage narrows, leading to a chamber bathed in an eerie, blue-tinged light. Within this chamber, you can make out a group of figures cloaked in shadow, gathered in a circle. In the center lies a pedestal with a dark obsidian object resting upon it. Evelyn follows you into the chamber, and the group of figures turns their attention to you. Your initiation into the Obsidian Covenant is about to begin. What would you like to do or say as you stand before this mysterious assembly? Hey everyone, it's me, Henry, your buddy! and I use the amulet's power to gently sway the minds of everyone present to be more open and accepting of me. You address the assembly with a casual tone, introducing yourself as Henry, their buddy. You use the amulet's power to subtly influence their thoughts, making them more open and accepting of your presence. The figures in the assembly nod in acknowledgement, and a sense of warmth and acceptance emanates from them. Evelyn gives you a discreet nod of approval. It seems your influence with the amulet is taking effect, and you've made a positive impression on the assembly. So, I hear your little evil fan club could use some more of this, and I gesture to myself. Well, if you need evil and chaos being done, look no further. Your confidence and willingness to embrace the path of evil and chaos earn you a few nods of approval from the assembly. One figure steps forward, their voice echoing in the chamber. Welcome Henry, to the Obsidian Covenant. We believe your unique talents will serve our cause well. With your initiation into the organization complete, you now stand as a member of the Obsidian Covenant, ready to undertake whatever dark tasks and challenges lie ahead. Oh, I didn't know we were using Thaumaturgy. <coughs> it's good to be here. Now, what despicable acts need doing? I'm eager to get out there and make the world a worse place. Your use of Thaumaturgy amplifies your voice, filling the chamber with your words. 
The assembly members are clearly impressed by your dramatic flair. The figure who spoke before steps forward once more, addressing you. Your enthusiasm is noted. There are many tasks that require your unique talents. First, you shall embark on a mission to the town of Thornhaven. We have heard whispers of a group of do-gooders and heroes gathering there. We want you to infiltrate their ranks and sow discord from within. As the mission details are laid out before you, it's clear that your newfound role within the Obsidian Covenant will lead to more opportunities for evil and chaos. So, I'm not just going there to burn the town to the ground and kill the heroes. You want them alive, but in disarray? The figure nods in response to your question. Indeed. While destruction is sometimes necessary, in this case, we see value in manipulating and disrupting their ranks from within. Allow them to crumble under the weight of their own conflicts, and they will serve our cause more effectively. God, that guy has a good voice. Uh, I respond, Of course, my patron loves deception and trickery. This should be fun. But I think I will need some supplies. I need some potions and money. My travels have exhausted both. Evelyn steps forward and hands you a small pouch of coin. Here is some gold to cover your expenses. You'll also find a selection of potions in your quarters within our hideout. They should aid you in your mission. With the pouch of coin and the promise of potions, you're well equipped for your mission to Thornhaven. Uh, I would like to check the pouch of coins to see how much is actually in there. You take a moment to check the pouch of coins that Evelyn handed you. It contains 500 gold pieces, a substantial <laughs> sum that should cover your expenses quite comfortably. With your pouch of gold and the knowledge that potions await you, you're ready to embark on your mission to Thornhaven. What's your next move? I go to my quarters and collect the potions, and then I make my way to Thornhaven. On the way, I would like to check the potions and see what they are. As you make your way to Thornhaven, you take a moment to examine the potions you've been provided. In the pouch, you find two healing potions. These potions will restore a moderate amount of hit points when consumed. One potion of invisibility. This elixir grants you the power of invisibility for a limited time, allowing you to move unseen. With these potions in your possession, you continue your journey to Thornhaven. The path ahead is filled with intrigue and opportunities for chaos. Is Thornhaven a village, a town, or a city? Like, what kind of size are we talking about here? I rolled a natural 20 on my history check. With your natural 20 on the history check, you recall that Thornhaven is a small but prosperous town nestled in the heart of a dense forest. It's known for its skilled artisans and traders who specialize in crafting exquisite jewelry and enchanted items, often using rare and magical materials found in the surrounding woods. While Thornhaven is not a large city, it's renowned for the quality of its goods and its peaceful atmosphere, which makes it an attractive target for manipulation and chaos. As you approach Thornhaven, you can see the outline of the town through the trees. What would you like to do next? I would like to first scope out the town, looking for any signs of the actual adventurers that I'm here to target, uh, and I got a 13 on my perception check. You carefully approach Thornhaven, your keen eyes scanning the town for any signs of the adventurers you've been tasked with infiltrating. With a perception check of 13, you spot a group of individuals who seem to fit the description of adventurers gathered near the town square. They appear to be discussing their next course of action. From your vantage point, you can't hear their conversation, but you've successfully located your targets. I would like to quickly run into town looking frantic and screaming about a monster. Help! Monster! It's coming for the town! We need heroes! I would also like to cast Thaumaturgy to cause some minor tremors like a giant monster's footsteps are causing them. And I got a 17 on my performance check. With a performance check of 17, you put on a convincing display of panic, running into Thornhaven and screaming about a monster approaching the town. Your cries for help draw the attention of both the adventurers and the townsfolk, who start to gather. As you cast Thaumaturgy, causing minor tremors that mimic the footsteps of a giant monster, the panic intensifies. The adventurers you've targeted look concerned and ready for action. The stage is set for your infiltration and manipulation. Adventurers, great! We can go into the woods and take down the beast before it makes it into town. I then turn and address the townspeople. Everyone else needs to run. No time to grab anything. Just run! Turning back to the adventurers, I say, It's big and can turn invisible. I don't know what it is, but it killed Bob. Oh god, poor Bob. And I fall to my knees and start grabbing at the nearest adventurer. You need to help. It's this way. And I start dragging them into the forest. Your urgent plea for assistance convinces the adventurers to take action. They ready their weapons and follow you into the forest, concerned about the threat you've described. The townspeople, heeding your warning, begin to scatter and flee the town, leaving their possessions behind in their haste to escape. As you lead the adventurers deeper into the woods, your manipulation and deception are in full swing. The group seems fully committed to the mission to confront this invisible and deadly threat. What's your plan as you guide them into the forest, Henry? <laughs> that is a good question. Uh, how many adventurers are there, and what are their races and classes? There are four adventurers in the group you've gathered. A human cleric, devoted to the god of light, who wields a mace and wears radiant armor. Uh. 
a halfling rogue, known for their stealth and cunning, equipped with a pair of daggers, an elven ranger, skilled in archery and tracking, with a bow and arrows at the ready, a dwarven warrior, bearing a massive warhammer and clad in sturdy plate armor. Yeah. They represent a diverse group of races and classes, each bringing their own unique skills to the mission. As you lead this group into the forest, they remain focused on the task at hand, ready to confront the unseen threat. I target the ranger with my amulet and try to convince them that they can see the beast in the trees and to go off on their own and try and get it. Convinced by your manipulation, the ranger breaks away from the group and stealthily moves deeper into the forest, bow drawn and senses alert, in pursuit of the imagined threat. The remaining adventurers are unaware of your influence and continue to follow your lead, searching for the unseen beast. Your plan is in motion. What will you do next? I next turn my attention to the halfling rogue and push the idea that the beast is actually able to possess people and that it's possessed the dwarf. And from here, I want to wait for the first sign that the rogue is under my influence before initiating my next plan. Uh, basically, if the rogue starts to attack the dwarf, I'd like to plead with the cleric to step in and help him by saying, Oh my god, that's what happened to Tiffany before she killed Bob and ran off the cliff. If the rogue only starts to eye the dwarf without actually initiating combat, I'll turn to the dwarf and say, Oh my god, I think he's possessed by the demon of the woods. Quick, get him! You focus your attention on the halfling rogue, using the amulet's power to plant the idea that the invisible beast has the ability to possess people, and that it has possessed the dwarf. Gradually, you sense the rogue becoming more susceptible to your manipulation. As the rogue begins to eye the dwarf with suspicion, you prepare for your next move. If the rogue initiates combat, you'll follow your plan to plead with the cleric for help, invoking the memory of Tiffany and Bob to elicit a response. However, if the rogue hesitates without starting a fight, you'll switch to your alternative approach of urging the dwarf to take action against the supposedly possessed rogue. Your plan is set, and the tension in the group grows as the rogue becomes increasingly agitated. I would like to cast Thaumaturgy again to create whispering sounds that sound like they're coming from the dwarf. You cast Thaumaturgy to create whispering sounds that appear to emanate from the dwarf, further fueling the rogue's suspicion that the dwarf is possessed. The rogue's paranoia intensifies, and they draw their daggers, ready to confront their perceived threat. The cleric, noticing the rogue's aggressive stance, moves to intervene, hesitating as you plead with them to help. The group is now teetering on the brink of conflict, with the rogue poised for action. What's your next move, as tensions rise within the group? I would like to say to the dwarf, Aren't you going to help? This beast is making everyone paranoid. You need to protect us. Uh, and I rolled a 10 on that performance check. You speak to the dwarf, urging them to take action and protect the group from the perceived threat of the possessed rogue. However, your performance check of 10 doesn't convey your message as convincingly as you had hoped. The dwarf hesitates, torn between the conflicting emotions and accusations within the group. The situation remains tense, and it's unclear which way it will tip. Uh, I would like to cast Minor Illusion to make it seem like the rogue's eyes start to glow red. And then I would like to scream in terror. Uh, I rolled an 18 on this performance check. With an impressive performance check of 18, you cast Minor Illusion to create the illusion that the rogue's eyes begin to glow with an eerie red light. The sudden and unsettling visual effect shocks both the rogue and the rest of the group. As you let out a convincing scream of terror, the cleric and the ranger are momentarily taken aback, unsure of what to make of the situation. The tension has reached a breaking point, and the group is now in a state of chaos. What will you do next in the midst of this chaotic scene? I would like to run to the ranger, appearing like I'm fleeing in panic. While doing so, I would like to cast Thaumaturgy to make the tremors happen again, but this time from where the other three adventurers are. I would then like to use the amulet to make the ranger see the other adventurers as monsters and hear everything they say is beastly snarls and roars. I would then like to scream, MONSTERS! Urging the ranger to shoot them. You make a frantic dash toward the ranger, appearing to be in a state of sheer panic. As you approach, you cast Thaumaturgy to create tremors near the other three adventurers, adding to the chaos of the situation. Then, using the amulet's power, you manipulate the ranger's perception, causing them to see their fellow adventurers as monstrous creatures and hear their words as inhuman snarls and roars. You scream monsters, in a desperate plea, urging the ranger to take action. The ranger, confused and disoriented by your manipulations, raises their bow and fires an arrow at one of their perceived monsters, catching the group off guard. Pandemonium erupts as the adventurers turn on each other in the midst of the forest, their trust shattered by the illusions and manipulations you've wrought. What will you do now, as the chaos you've sown unfolds around you? I would like to run back to the town and see if there are any people left there, hoping that they've all successfully escaped as I warned. Uh, if everyone has left, I would like to find the house that looks like it would have the most wealth and steal as much as I can before setting it aflame. Uh, if there are still people there, I would like to try and convince them to leave for their own safety, and if they don't want to leave, I'll decide to what to do from there. You make a hasty retreat back to Thornhaven, 
hoping to find the town abandoned as you instructed. Upon your arrival, you discover that most of the townspeople have indeed heeded your warning and evacuated the area. The streets are empty, and many houses have been left behind. With most of the town deserted, you identify a house that appears to be the most opulent, indicating the wealth of its owner. You enter and begin to search for valuables to steal, planning to set it ablaze afterward. However, as you search, you suddenly hear a faint whimper coming from one of the back rooms. It appears that not everyone has left Thornhaven, and someone remains hidden within the house. What will you do now, as you stand on the precipice of destruction and potential confrontation? Uh, I use Thaumaturgy to make my footsteps sound much bigger than they actually are, and I add the tremors to make my footsteps tremble the house, and use Minor Illusion to occasionally make growling noises to give the illusion that I'm a big scary beast, so the hiding person won't come out from their hiding place. I then continue to plunder the house of its wealth, once done, I would like to cast Eldritch Blast on one of the main support pillars of the house to collapse a corner. With all of that done, I would like to exit the town in a different direction from the fighting adventurers and the townsfolk, find a hidden area to watch the fallout, and I got a 17 on my nature check to find a nice safe little hidden area with a clear view of the town. You use your abilities to create an illusion of a fearsome presence, making it seem as if you're a massive intimidating creature. The whimpering person hidden within the house remains in hiding, too terrified to emerge. You proceed to plunder the house of its wealth, gathering valuables as you go. Once you've taken what you can, you cast Eldritch Blast at one of the main support pillars, causing a corner of the house to collapse in a cacophony of destruction. With your illusory presence still looming over the house, you exit Thornhaven in a different direction from the fighting adventurers and townsfolk. Your nature check of 17 allows you to find a hidden area that offers a clear view of the town, concealed from sight. From your vantage point, you watch as chaos unfolds in Thornhaven. The adventurers continue to fight amongst themselves, unaware of your absence, while the remaining townsfolk must grapple with the devastation you've left behind. As you observe the aftermath of your actions, you can't help but feel a sense of satisfaction and chaos achieved. I would like to watch the rest of the fallout and see which adventurers survive their conflict. I would also like to see if the townspeople return to town or if I've driven them off for good. Then I would like to wait for the cover of night before thinking about leaving. You remain hidden in your concealed spot, observing the chaos and fallout in Thornhaven. As you watch, the conflict among the adventurers rages on. They clash with one another, and it becomes apparent that some are gravely injured, while others may not survive. Meanwhile, the townspeople, having witnessed the destruction and chaos, are slow to return to Thornhaven. Fearful of the events that transpired, many of them may indeed choose to seek refuge elsewhere. You decide to wait for the cover of night before considering your next move. Darkness falls, shrouding the town in shadows, and you remain hidden, waiting for the right moment to slip away from Thornhaven unnoticed. What will you do under the cover of night, as you contemplate your next steps? I would like to create a small fire in the forest where the adventurers were fighting, hoping to either reaffirm that the spot they were in is tainted, or create a forest fire that will threaten the town. I would then like to return to the Obsidian Covenant. You decide to take one final chaotic action before leaving Thornhaven behind. Under the cover of night, you create a small fire in the forest near the spot where the adventurers were fighting. The flickering flames dance in the darkness, casting eerie shadows on the trees. This act serves both to reaffirm the sense of danger and chaos in the area, and poses a potential threat to the town. With your mission in Thornhaven complete, you make your way back to the Obsidian Covenant, leaving behind a town in turmoil and destruction. As you return to the secretive organization, you carry with you the knowledge that you've successfully sown discord and chaos in your wake. I walk in proudly and say, with Pharmaturgy making my voice all echoey, Well, that town's in peril, and the adventurers are, let's just say, having some internal conflict. You enter the chambers of the Obsidian Covenant with a sense of pride, using Thaumaturgy to make your voice echo dramatically as you announce your return. The members of the organization turn their attention to you, intrigued by your presence. Your words about the town's peril and the discord among the adventurers pique their interest, and they regard you with a mixture of curiosity and approval. The Obsidian Covenant appears pleased with the chaos you've sown in Thornhaven, and you can sense that your actions have earned you further favor within the organization. With my voice now back to normal, I walk up to the Covenant member that tasked me with the mission, throw my arms around his shoulder and say, So, what's my reward for an evil deed done well? You approach the Covenant member who had given you the mission with a confident demeanor. Throwing your arm around their shoulder, you inquire about your reward for carrying out the task so effectively. The Covenant member smiles beneath their hood, acknowledging your success. Well done, Henry. Your dedication to chaos and manipulation has proven invaluable. A token of our appreciation, we offer you a special artifact that will aid you in your future endeavors. With that, they provide you with a dark amulet, similar in design to the one you currently possess but with additional powers and secrets. It radiates an aura of malevolent energy. The Obsidian Covenant has rewarded your skills and loyalty, and you now possess a powerful new artifact. And... what does this do? 
I ask, holding up the new amulet. The Covenant member explains. This amulet, known as the Amulet of Shadow Binding, grants you the power to manipulate shadows and darkness. You can use it to cloak yourself in darkness, move stealthily, and even summon shadowy creatures to do your bidding. The possibilities with this new amulet are intriguing, and it seems the Obsidian Covenant has entrusted you with a potent tool to further your chaotic ambitions. What would you like to do or ask next, now that you possess this mysterious amulet of shadow binding? Really? That does sound like some fun, I say grinning wide. How many shadow creatures can I have at once? And I would like to summon one right now with the instructions to get me a drink and something to eat. The Covenant member responds. You can summon and control up to two shadowy creatures at a time with the amulet. However, remember that they are bound to the shadows and will dissipate after a period. With that, you use the amulet of shadow binding to summon a shadowy figure. It materializes from the darkness, its form shifting and undulating. You give it the instructions to fetch you a drink and something to eat. The shadowy servant nods and disappears into the darkness, quickly returning with the drink and a plate of food. Your new amulet has already proven its utility, and it seems there's much more you can do with it. Well, that's cool. I say, taking the meal from the creature. Oh, who's an evil little shadow monster? I say to the summon, giving them a quick scratch behind the ear. I'll call you Simon. You give the shadowy creature a playful nickname, calling it Simon and giving it a friendly scratch behind the ear. It responds with an eerie yet appreciative sensation, resembling a sort of shadowy purring. The members of the Obsidian Covenant watch with interest as you interact with your new shadowy companion. Clearly impressed with your command over the amulet, with Simon at your side and the Amulet of Shadow binding in your possession, you're now even more prepared for your future endeavors in the service of chaos and evil. Well, good night, Rando Covenant members who still haven't introduced themselves. I'm going to go to bed, and I give a quick wave as I walk to my room that Evelyn showed me before the mission. I summon Simon and the other summon that I can bring out and say, Keep watch for any dangers in this room. Wake me if anyone or anything enters the room. My next words are directed to the new summon. Do good, and I'll give you a name in the morning. And with that, I'd like to go have a long rest. You bid the enigmatic members of the Obsidian Covenant good night, and make your way to your room, the one Evelyn showed you before your mission. Before you rest, you summon Simon and your other shadowy companion, instructing them to keep watch for any dangers, and to wake you, if anything, or anyone enters. As you drift off to sleep, you look forward to the new day and the opportunities for chaos and power it may bring. Your loyal shadowy companions remain vigilant throughout the night, ensuring your safety. With a long rest, you awaken refreshed and ready for whatever dark adventures await you in the service of your patron, Dame Felicity Nighthow. Hey everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. This campaign was run by GPT 3.5, but I promise you, all future adventures for Henry will be even more intriguing as they were run by the even more advanced GPT 4. And hey, did you enjoy the visuals and the music? Believe it or not, they were generated by AIs, much like this outro. We truly live in amazing times. No. Just for a bit of fun, let me show you some of my favorite images that didn't quite make the cut. Alrighty adventurers, I can't wait to embark on another journey with you all. Until then, I'll see you next time.